What's poppin' YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Astro Finesse. It's your boy Lil Finesse Jiggy Hippie back with another video for y'all. And in this video right here, we're gonna be talking about if you have planets in the fourth house. And now pause for the cause. If you don't know how to find out or how to read your birth chart, if you're just starting off your journey of self-knowledge, self-understanding, if you're a new subscriber, if nobody puts you on as to why it's so important to learn about yourself and to love yourself, to study yourself, to understand yourself through astrology and morality, Lori, I got you. There's a couple of videos. I'll put the link in the description. You have to watch them first to become hip to the knowledge of what I'm about to talk about right now. So if you look at your birth chart, and you realize we have different planets in the fourth house, or even if you don't have planets in the fourth house, it's still good to know about what the houses mean and what they represent in your birth chart. So without further ado, <clears throat> let's just get it popping, shall we? Now, before we start, let's talk about what the fourth house represents and what it means in your birth chart. So the fourth sign of the zodiac is cancer. So the fourth house represents cancer characteristics, cancer type things, which is home life, family life, your roots, your traditions, things that you hold internally, your emotional capacity, your emotional capacity, your, like your emotions. So things that have to do with things that you hold dear to your heart. So your roots, home life, tradition. So think about your, your past life too. So things that have to do with family and your roots is the biggest thing for the fourth house energy. So now starting off, if you have your son in the fourth house, remember the son is the ego. So your ego is gonna be in the house of cancer, is gonna be in the house of your family dynamic, of your roots and traditions. So your ego is gonna be tied into, first of all, how your house looks, how your home looks, how how warm and inviting your home is to people. You're the type that likes to have, that loves having your family around you, and your ego is tied into how your family treats you <clears throat> and how your family uh, looks at you, how your family views you. So your ego is really tied into your family dynamic. So if you're around, a loving kind of family, a nurturing kind of family, you feel the most confident within yourself. If in your family life dynamic, your childhood, you didn't have the best childhood, you will realize like growing up, your self-confidence, your self-esteem will be tarnished a little bit because your ego is tied in completely 100% with your family dynamic, with your traditions, with your roots, with your childhood growing up, with your motherly figure, your fatherly figure growing up. So understand that a lot of times in this video too, because we're talking about the fourth house, I'm gonna be talking about your childhood traumas and like healing your inner child. This is the most important thing for anybody that has placements in the fourth house. Remember, it's on the northern hemisphere. It's on the bottom of the chart, so it's the most private. So it's the most internal. So this is like the most important thing to do is to heal your inner child. Growing up, becoming an adult, if your inner child is not healed, you will realize that you're gonna be causing a lot of pain, a lot of hurt to a lot of people especially yourself. So first of all, like I said, son, in the fourth house, your ego is tied into your family life. You could be a homebody too, loving to be at home, loving to be around your family, either your family growing up or when you create your own family, you're gonna, you're gonna have that ego tied to them and how they view you, how they feel about you and how they nurture you. You can also be the type to really be very nurturing to people around you. Now, if you have your moon in the fourth house, first of all, you already know I fuck with you on an even deeper level because I have the same exact moon house placement. And now for me personally, and if you have an air sign moon like myself, I have an Aquarius moon. So if you have an Aquarius moon or a Libra moon or Gemini moon, having an air sign moon in the house of cancer and the house of emotions, for me personally, this is a little annoying because I'm gonna start off by saying like moon in the fourth house people, we go through a lot of mood swings a lot, right? Because you know, cancers, Cancer rule by the moon, the moon changes all the time, so we go through mood swings. So having an air sign moon going through mood swings, it's like, we're not really good with emotions already, but being in a house of emotions, so we're constantly feeling things, then our mind rationalizes it, like what's going on, why am I feeling this? It's like, we usually overthink things or think things. When, when, when emotions come in, we think about it rather than feeling it. So it could be a little like harder for air sign moon people to have displacement. But all in all though, our moon, our emotions are gonna be tied complete, completely towards our roots and our family life. So our emotions are gonna be tied into wanting to have that security no matter where we go, no matter who we deal with. We just crave stability and security. That's the biggest thing. We could be really attached to the past, attached to our traditions. Like for me personally, 
Uh, I always represent like you know, my, my roots and my tradition is a Ghana, West Africa. So I'm always, I've seen the background. I got the Kente cloth, the Kente patterns. I'm always wearing Africa. Also like my roots are in Egypt. So I'm always representing the Egyptian culture. So we have a real strong tie to our traditions and to our culture. So understand with this placement though, if we grew up in a family life that didn't really nurture us, didn't really emotionally sustain us, Growing up, understand that it is your responsibility to nurture yourself. I'm going to say it again. It is your responsibility. If you grew up in an environment where you wasn't really nurtured emotionally, it's your responsibility to put that nurturing energy into yourself, to put that love into yourself, to put that security and stability into yourself, to take care of yourself. Because if you don't, what happens with displacement is you're going to always be searching elsewhere for that nurturing energy, for that for that stability, searching outside of yourself. And when you do that, most times, most times than not, you will be disappointed when you like when it's, if it's in a relationship, or if it's in a job, or if it's in a material possession. You're gonna like put your stability and emotional attachment to something outside yourself. A lot of times, it will not play out well. So understand that having this placement, we need that emotional stability a lot. We need that emotional security a lot. So the best thing to do is to give it to yourself first so that you'll be able to, in turn, give it to others. Because a lot of times if you don't, it will not work out for you, like I said. But generally, you're going to be very attached to your past, going to be very attached to the family dynamic, to your traditions, to your cultures. You're going to be very attached to it. You could, you could really hold on to the past too. So a lot, we also have to learn how to let things go, especially when it comes to our childhood past and childhood traumas that may have happened. We have to learn to let things go. And I'm talking to y'all, but I'm talking to myself at the same time. I don't want y'all thinking I'm perfect and I got it all figured out. Like everything is a journey, so we're all on this journey together. So if you have this position, understand that look for stability and put that nurturing and love loving into yourself first, because you need that stability. A lot of times we can also like you know change our our furniture around, change houses, change homes. Like we do a lot of changes because we're always searching for like the st for like stability. We're not the type that likes to do like, you know, one night stands and all that. Even relationships, we like to have that one person, want to have that nurturing partner, that stable partner, that stability kind of thing. So everywhere we go, we search for stability. So I'm going to say this one more time. Put that stability energy, put that nurturing energy into yourself first before you go out and do your thing. So now having um, Mercury in the fourth house. Mercury, you already know, is a planet of communication, the planet of intelligence and, and the way you communicate and talk and it's the fastest moving planet so having this fastest moving planet in the fourth house similar to having mercury and cancer first of all growing up you could have been in an environment that was always encouraging you to read to learn to study to communicate yeah like you had a very open communication with your with your parents you have a really open communication with your family members your mind can always be going towards the past your mind can always be going towards your family your mind can always be going towards your traditions and that dynamic of the fourth house energy. So understand that the way your parents raise you, the way your parents uh, taught you and talk to you, their, their their ideologies can really be influencing the way you think too. Your, your mind is going to be attached to your family dynamic, to your childhood dynamic. So you can understand that the way your parents think can really trickle down to the way you think as well. So understand, depending if you have good childhood or, or bad childhood, Understand that you're going to be tied mentally, the way you think and the way you communicate. Mentally, you're going to be tied to your childhood and how you were raised. So be very aware of this fact of, about yourself so that you're not going to be too much held on to the past, too much held on to negativity that might have happened because it's going to be tied like directly to the way you were raised in your childhood and your traditions and your past. This is fourth house energy. This is very private energy too. So these people are very private. Almost all the placements in the fourth house, these people are going to be very private and very homebody-esque type people. And now having uh, Mars in the fourth house, you already know Mars is the planet of action. Mars is the planet of aggression, of war, of being direct and to the point. Very similar to having a Mars in Cancer. The first thing I could say about this placement is understand that you have to know how to express your anger or express your emotions in a healthy manner. These people are really what's that word really um underneath the surface so they're really they do things in a very subtle manner they do things in a very like if they get angry about something or, or if they're getting emotional about something 
at first they like to like, like hold it inside, like to build it up. They do things in a very not in your face, but it's kind of like low key and subtle. So what happens with this placement is the more you hold it in, the more you just let it pile up. Something's gonna happen as the, the ticking bomb is gonna tick and you already know Mars and Cancer energy, Mars and fourth house energy, when they get angry or when it finally ticks, it's like that Mars energy finally comes out, adding on the emotions. So it's gonna be pour out of emotion and anger at the same time. It's like a huge, like, like a huge explosion kind of thing. If you're not aware of how to perp, how to um, consciously like transmute this energy, consciously know how to express yourself when it comes to being angry or sad, knowing how to express your emotions in a healthy manner, meditation. Try not to hold things in too much. A lot of times you could be you could be just very subtle in what you're doing when you want to get something instead of going directly at it. You could do it in a very low key, subtle way. You don't want people to really know or like to to know your intentions like that. So it's kind of hard to really know what you what you what you're after in a way sometimes. So you got to work on being a little more direct outwardly. But understand that Mars is a planet of action and fighting. So having that fighting energy, fighting planet in the house of your of your family life and roots and a uh, childhood dynamic you could have a lot of fights and battles with your with your parents with your family you could be fighting a lot in your house in your home so keep that in mind that you're not always combative a lot in your family life and your family dynamic and also keep in mind that you need to learn how to consciously use your emotions in a healthy manner and don't wait don't build it up don't be quiet don't let it build up and all of a sudden erupt in an OD manner, that's like really unhealthy to you and the people that are feeling that wrath, if that makes sense. But all in all though, Mars and Cancer people, you're gonna exerting your energy towards your family life. You're gonna be, you're gonna love being around your family, being being the head of the household or being the nurturing figure of your household. You're gonna love using your energy in the family dynamic, especially if you have like children of your children of yourself, children of your own. You're gonna love being that family dynamic kind of person. Keep in mind though, you're not holding your, your, your anger and your sadness in too long because it could come out in the most unsus unsuspecting, unhealthy manner. And now having a Venus in the fourth house, similar to having Venus in Cancer. First of all, you're, you know, everywhere Venus goes, it makes it beautiful, it makes it graceful, it makes it Venusian. So having a Venus in the house of can in the house of Cancer, in the fourth house of your families and the house and the home life. First of all, these people love having the nicest things in their house. You actually take pride in buying the, having the nicest wallpaper, having the nicest cabinet color, nicest bed. Like you just ha want to have the nicest things that makes you feel that makes you feel comfortable and relaxed and you know, Venusian in your home life. So y'all really take a lot of pride in making sure you have the nicest things in your in your house, in relationships y'all crave and y'all need and you're attracted to partners that are also very nurturing you don't like similar to moon in the fourth house you don't like that one night stand and that's it yes you crave and love that stability factor you love that nurturing factor you love that you're going to be here all the time we're going to build something you yes you love that stability factor in relationships you crave that you need that you need a partner that is nurturing you need a partner that understands you emotionally you need a partner that can express himself emotionally and that's that's where you that's where you thrive when you're at home in the beauty and the comfort of your own home surrounded by your family surrounded by those that you love and and what you've built in the beauty of your own home that venus qualities makes it makes everything beautiful and and very engaging so people love being in your home because they have they feel so they feel so comfortable you love cooking for people and like seeing their reaction like you just generally love giving out your nurturing energy to people in your in your direct in your direct home and in your direct house in your direct environment remember this is in the second quadrant we're going on to personal expression we came from personal identity now we're going on to personal expression so this is how you express yourself in your personal environment in your home environment so now having uh, uranus in the fourth house and if you have this placement you already know i fuck with you on an even deeper level because i also have this fourth house placement so we we see each other eye to eye when it comes to having this Uranus planet, which rules Aquarius, which is all about doing things sporadically, doing things spontaneously, unpredictable, very weird and eccentric planet in the house of your family life, your home life, your traditions. So now these people, which is us, we kind of grew up always feeling like we're our family life is mad different. Like we're always 
just very different from everybody around us. Like we didn't have that, like let's say we grew up in an environment where everybody had that pick, white picket fence and the dog and the kids and they had that perfect family that they always go on vacations every summer and all that stuff. Our family life was completely different. We could have, we could have moved around a lot. We could have been through um, situations where things were just so unexpected all the time. At the same time, we could have had a parent that was very, that gave us a lot of space, a parent that was kind of more of a friend to us in a way, or a parent that was not really there. So we always just felt like things were just very different. You couldn't really know what was gonna happen in a way too. So having this placement, we kind of we kind of grew up not really knowing how to express ourselves emotionally or not really knowing how to be nurturing because we grew up not knowing what it's like to have that, you know, that cliche family life dynamic. So these people, which is us, I gotta say us, we can like, you know, we can kind of run away from that nurturing energy, from that comfort, because we like our space a lot. Uranus is ruled by Aquarius. Aquarius likes to being individualistic, likes their space. So we could be the type to either not want to have kids because we want to be freedom giving and love our freedom. Or when we have kids, we'll be the type of parents that's very friend like with our children or very gives them a lot of space. So we're not really the cliche conventional caregivers when it comes to having children or family dynamic. So understand with this placement, freedom is what gives you security, what gives you your own sense of your own sense of your own sense of loving yourself is like when you when you know you have freedom in a way. So freedom is a really big thing for this placement. You feel safe and secure within yourself when you have the freedom to do what you to do what you want. When you have the freedom to move how you want to move. So understand that people that have this placement needs to under, needs to people that deal with people with this placement need to understand that we love our freedom a lot and we need to have a lot of space when it comes to like relationships or when it comes to dealing with us in a in an intimate fourth house personal manner. So you're honest in the fourth house people, I feel you, I understand you. A lot of times we are really weird too. We, we do a lot of weird shit, but underneath the surface are like very, like be, under the radar, we're really like individualistic and weird privately a lot too. So we really be, so we just like our space a lot. That's what I'm saying. So keep that in mind with this placement that you don't go overboard with your space because people might really want to be with you, want to talk to you, want to get to know you. But then you having that Uranus rebellious nature when it comes to being rebellious in the house of in the house of uh, cancer, in the house of family life dynamic. You could be really rebellious to merging with somebody to love and to family life. Like I said, not wanting to have kids or being really independent when you are a parent, if that makes sense. So now having Saturn in the fourth house. This placement is a little difficult. Actually, every single Saturn placement is difficult at first. So you know, Saturn makes things difficult, covers it up, makes it hard for you to um, to master this trait at first until it forces you to kind of, it puts obstacles in your way. It forces you to kind of slowly, gradually learn how to master this trait. So with Saturn in the fourth house, what happens is these people grow up, similar to having Saturn in Cancer, these people grow up they grow up early. They grow up with a lot of responsibilities. They grow up watching their parents working really hard. They probably have to work hard or work um, in the house for their parents when they're not there. You, you really have to grow up early and working, like really have to be disciplined. That's, that's what I'm trying to find. Really have to be disciplined early. So growing up, you could be pessimistic on yourself as in like, how come, how come I have to work so hard? How come I have to grow up so early? Why do I have to be so mature? While people my age, my peers are all, you know, being kids, doing what they're doing, having fun, but I have to be, you know, mature and I gotta be all disciplined, I gotta be all set in my ways. You could be you could be pessimistic as in like why are my parents working so hard, but we still don't have a lot of money and my friends or my peers, they're going on vacations all the time, they're doing a lot of things, they're buying all these cars, they're doing all these things, but then I have to be, you know, it's kind of you grow up a little rough a little bit. You kind of have have like a, a rough start in life when it comes to your childhood. But understand that as time goes on, because of you being so knowing, knowing the importance of structure, you are really, really structured in your family life. So knowing the importance of structure, knowing the importance of of discipline and having knowing what goes in the right way when it comes to your house, your, your dynamic, your traditions, these people grow up becoming really structured and well, well-liked parents, actually. You become a really good parent to your children because you know what it's like to be disciplined all the time, to grow up with all these respons responsibilities. So understand that at first it's gonna be hard for y'all to actually 
embrace the family dynamic of your life, to embrace your traditions. But as you get older, you will realize like just how your parents were in a way, you kind of become the same way. You, you actually become really traditional with how you were raised. You, come, you become really, you, you actually embrace how, how your roots are and your traditions and the discipline and all that. So understand with displacement at first, your family life might seem like it's not the best, but as you get older, as Saturn comes back around, as you mature, your family life dynamic, your roots dynamic, your personal nourishment dynamic will change and progress and you actually become a master at the fourth house energy. You become like one of the best parents, one of the best mothers, best fathers. You become, you have that good family dynamic that you always wanted when you were younger but then you just have to grow up and become more mature in that aspect of life. So now having Pluto in the fourth house, this is a house, this is a planet of transformation, rule Scorpio, of chaos and disorder, but comes up the Phoenix or resurrects itself from chaos and disorder. So having this, this planet of chaos and disorder and darkness and transformation in your house of home life, family life, and your roots and all that, these people a lot of times have grew up in traumatic, with traumatic childhood events. Like traumatic things happened to them as a child. They kind of grew up with like low self-esteem because of how their family life dynamic was, with low confidence. You go, you just see a lot of transformation. You see a lot of, you go through a lot of dark, deep, inner transformations growing up. Especially, especially because Pluto, Pluto in the fourth house could say that you could have a, an overbearing parent or a scorpionic parent that's really controlling over you, combative over you, wants to make sure they know you, wants to make sure you're doing what doing the right thing. Could be really obsessed over you, making sure like they're just really on you in a really like combative, overbearing way. So growing up you could have feel you could feel, you could, uh, <laughs> so growing up you could feel very uncomfortable a little bit. You could feel like you're being watched over all the time. Things are always happening unsuspectingly. Transformations happening, like I said, you know, like like traumatic events could have happened growing up. But understand that Pluto breaks and shakes things up. But then after the transformation happens, that's when like the Phoenix arises. That's when that's when you become your best version of yourself after you go through all these events. So I'm gonna stress again, especially with this placement, you really have to work and truly learn how to heal your inner child wounds. Like this is very prominent, especially for displacement, to really heal yourself from what happened to you in your childhood in the past. Cause it's very unfortunate having displacement sometimes, but if you can consciously be aware of what's going on and actually heal yourself, you can actually be the type to help somebody else that's going through the same thing. You could be like an you could be like an encourager or a motivator to people, a therapist to people that are going through things like this, because you already know what it's like to have a traumatic childhood. You already know what it's like to have traumatic things happening to you in, in like in your home life and your family life dynamic. So understanding that the healing factor, the nurturing yourself factor, the loving yourself factor, forgiving yourself factor, forgiving your parents too, if things things happen traumatically. Understand that all everything happens for a reason. So it's all about Looking at your chart, seeing what you're seeing, what cards you're given, and knowing how to play the game of life with the cards you're given. So heal yourself from your inner child wounds, because a lot of times people with displacement, if you don't heal yourself, you go into adulthood with the same mentality. You go into adulthood with all these transformations still happening. You go into adulthood and have your own children, and you kind of carry over those wounds onto your kids. So it'll just be like a whole cycle, a whole never-ending cycle, if that makes sense. So really important to nurture yourself, to take care of yourself, and to heal yourself from your childhood wounds. Heal yourself from your childhood wounds. I cannot stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough with this placement. It's very, very important. So now having a Neptune in the fourth house, and if you have this placement, you already know I fuck with you on an even deeper level, because I also have Neptune in my, first, in my fourth house. So you already know Neptune is a planet that rules Pisces. It's all about delusions illusions things that are not seen it kind of makes things hard to really pinpoint to see what it is it kind of makes it hard to it makes everything more illusionary more wavy more spiritual too more intuitive so having this placement a lot of times with Nep neptune in the house of your family dynamic of your childhood a lot of times growing up you will think back at your childhood and you actually realize like oh wait wait so when i was a kid i thought it was, i thought things were like this way but now i realize exactly the exact opposite or oh, I didn't know what was going on when I was a child, but now I'm getting older, I actually realize what, what was happening. A lot of times you, you like uncover your family secrets as you get older, you uncover secrets that 
that were kind of not really pinpointed to you when you were at the when you were a child. <clears throat> your kind your parents could have kind of created an environment for you that was like I'm not gonna say fake, but that was not real. So as you get older, you realize like, oh, just snap! Like that's not that's not how it really that's not how it really was. What I thought it was. So Neptune kind of make it hard to really know everything about your family because it will kind of make it like kind of secretive, kind of low key, kind of mystical, kind of spiritual in a way. So understand that we kind of go through like epiphanies of just sitting there and all of a sudden we think about what happened to us, what happened to us in our childhood and like, damn, that that's why that happened or this is why that happened or this is not what I thought was going on at, at the time, but now I understand. So we kind of grow up uncovering things that we should have uncovered, we should have uncovered in our childhood, but Neptune kind of made it hard for us to know what was going on. You also could have had a parent that was like, you know, indulging in escapism. You already know escape, escapism energy is that Pisces energy. So whether drinking or drugs or smoking or gambling, anything that has to do with escaping reality, we could have been, we could have been susceptible to seeing that. So understand with displacement that you don't also, you know, fall into those kind of traps, fall into that escape, escapism energy, that you also don't fall into the doing things like that and having your own children and doing the same thing for your children. So us that has Neptune in the fourth house, we have a more spiritual understanding of how our family dynamic was. We have a more mystical understanding of how our family dynamic was. We could be very spiritually attached to the past. So understand that, like I said, that we don't really not heal ourselves and look within ourselves and understand what was going on as you get older it's like you just become more aware of what was going on so as you have this as you get these as you get this knowledge of what was going on in your childhood use this to understand to to forgive and to really heal yourself and to love yourself like i said so you don't carry over the same energy to your children and now having a jupiter in the fourth house uh, this is which is like the placement that says you have a very abundant kind of family life. You already know Jupiter is the biggest planet, so wherever it goes, it expands it. It's all about luck and abundance, and also traveling too. So you could have been a type to you could be the type to loving that loves to travel with your family or move to different countries. You're really attracted to wanting to live in other places. But having a Jupiter in the fourth house, you could be the type to have a really big family or to want to have a lot of children. You could have had you could have been raised in a dynamic of a lot of nurturing you could have a lot of lucky abundance when it comes to your family dynamic you could attract people in your life that really give you abundance and are really are really a part of your journey like a part of your soul tribe that actually help you and actually carry on these traits of abundance and blessings and luck and all this jupiter energy with your family dynamic so these people love having a big family love having a lot of people around them in the family life dynamic they love having a, a nice home and an abundant home they actually love being nurturing you're also really lucky when you are nurturing to people so understand that jupiter is just going to make things more abundant and more and more just like more more lucky in your family life dynamic with this placement so these people are more lucky as in their childhood growing up they had a lot of nurturing in childhood growing up. They had a lot of just abundance and luck in their family life dynamic, in their roots, and in their traditions. And now, if you have a stellium in your fourth house like me, understand that in this lifetime, our emphasis in this lifetime is going to be towards our family life, towards our roots. And the biggest thing I'm going to keep stressing is towards our inner inner healing in terms of our inner nurturing loving and nurturing ourselves internally because if you don't love yourself internally if you don't heal from your childhood wounds if you don't love your inner child you will search else elsewhere for the security and when you're searching elsewhere for it and you get disappointed that will just cause even more damage to you internally so our emphasis in this lifetime is our inner love our inner healing our family life dynamic our traditions being tied close to our past to our to our home life we could be homebodies big time very private people but all in all heal your inner child heal from your childhood wounds so that was my video on plants in the fourth house i hope y'all enjoyed that my next video is going to be moving on to the fifth house and you already know i'm about to go in if you have subscribed to my channel appreciate all y'all for real for real if you haven't subscribed yet though go ahead and handle that one time for your boy don't forget to drink your water mind your business and be safe out here it's your boy Lil Finesse Jiggy Hippie. I'ma see all y'all when I see y'all. Peace.